Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this quite singular new moon gathering that I am hosting here from my place on the west, northwest corner of the Catskill Mountains. My name is Carol, and uh, some of you coming to this recording later on uh, may have seen previous ones during 2023. Um, almost all of them, the ones that have a Zoom component to it uh, uh, and the recordings then offered, just about everyone was um, uh, focused on one of the new moons that came along during the calendar year. Um, <laughs> I have this funny little thing, I got to acknowledge it at the moment, only that in trying to uh, put this together in terms of the camera angle, I know I've got a hat above me of that ceiling fan, not much I can do about it. So now that I've acknowledged it, I can stop looking at it when I'm talking to you. So welcome everybody again. I hope this finds you well and in good form as the lunar new year has arrived with the Aquarius new moon. And it is February the 9th when myself and a number of lovely people, uh, lunar lovers uh, such as I am and as such as you are, who are watching this recording and joining us in that very real sense of linear time not really applying. So we're all here together. If it's through my newsletter that you uh, have come to uh, watch this video, you know the there's two aspects we're going to be focused on in this recording. Not so much a meditation, but a celebration of the arrival of the Year of the Wood Dragon. So before we get over into all of that, something that, and if you've seen the first of the videos of 2024, um, what I offered to you who come to be connected with this work that I share through the wonders of the World Wide Web, um, I proposed that we take advantage of a practice that is setting our earth anchor. And what that essentially is, is finding very um, that very real connection that we have and spend time even on a daily basis of connecting ourselves through that energetic connection we have, heaven to earth, earth to sky, as I like to say it. So we're going to review that tonight. There is, uh, and I'll put the link in the notes so that if this is the very first you've heard about it, had not seen the previous video and know nothing uh, beyond just what I'm saying now. We will do that practice now. I'm going to give you a little explanation of why I felt it was important to include in this year's um, gatherings such as this, but you'll find more details on my website. That link will be there as well. So the details that come with most people's videos, especially ones that are offering some sort of um, teaching or sharing or all of that, there's that detail section um, on YouTube's pages where I can include uh, details for you to utilize and um, take further kind of meanderings through the World Wide Web to see what else is there. So when I describe this as the Lunar New Year, it is in the terms of lunar cycles. It is the start of the, uh, and because we have the Chinese New Year, that culture recognizing it as the beginning of the new year, it is setting us off on the 12 or 13, depending on the year, cycles of the new moon to full moon to new moon again. So a month for ourselves, most of us, having come um, North American wise or whatever, we have a calendar that begins in January, we feel ourselves to be somewhat already into this year. If you are like me, and I'm sure there's very few of you who would be watching this far in this video who won't probably have an agreement that there's a lot going on in the world and how it is that we can keep our feet and keep balanced in times that are um, certainly challenging for um, the average person to navigate. It's been like that for a while. I don't know if times may be required for a lot of us when we were in the, the uh, pandemic and the quiet enforced upon us to be at home and uh, going more with an inner journey. So now we're almost catapulted is what I think back into the hurly burly of the world. 
here in America, we're faced with some rather chaotic months ahead of us. I don't have to elaborate on why that is so. Um, and around the world, we are faced with a lot of um, things that are difficult as people who are compassionate and empathic to navigate. The news is um, incredibly distressing. How do we keep our balance? How do we keep our feet? In, for me, what is an incredible advantage living in a beautiful country setting, I can escape from the internet or the television or the turn off the computer screen and take a step outside and, and be in nature. That is such a blessing and I appreciate that um, I have such riches in that regard. For those who have less of that or their schedules don't permit them to be out and enjoying that particular beautiful grounding, literal grounding up, uh, uh, opportunity, this is a daily practice that has been given to me through the teaching of a woman I worked with some time ago now, Shanta Gabrielle. And it was with work with her that she shared essentially this very same practice. As I would hope you would all know, if you follow spiritual um, uh, instruction or teachers or anything like that, whatever workshops or online courses or anything, things are given to us to benefit our own spiritual journey, our own earthly journey. And certainly this is true of that. My particular angle is of our connections to Mother Earth. I know, and I made a little note on my list of things I hope to include as we go along tonight. I wanted to remind everybody who has come tonight, has come to this video and is part of this group tonight, all of you, each and every one of us chose to be here now in this chaotic, turbulent time. Some of us have been here for a few decades. Uh, those of us who have roots back in the 60s and 70s, and I'm glad to say I have good company in that tonight. Um, we've lived through those chaotic times, and I think we had hoped that possibly we'd come to a quieter spell in our lives, but such is evidently not going to be the case. Partly true because we chose to be here to repeat myself. We came here to help this transitional time. The chaos of what we're experiencing in the wider world, hopefully less of it in our personal lives, we signed on because we were going to be given the skill set to be a part of what I and many others see as the birthing of a new world. From the Piscean age, and I'm not going to go into it now, there's so much available for you to find, to the age of Aquarius. It is a new time and new possibilities I'm going to give you two things to use tonight, and I'm so excited to introduce you to these guys, but we'll get back to that in a minute. I'd like to do for us tonight, before we get any further, a practice of setting our earth anchor. There's more to tell you about that in related videos, and I'll link that below. So what I invite you to do now, I guess you might think of this as sort of meditation. I'm going to take you through this practice first with some water. So I invite you to simply sit back, close your eyes if you want, following my voice. I may or may not have my eyes closed. You don't have to be looking at me. But find yourself comfortably in the seat, in your place, wherever that is. And again, it's wonderful feeling the group of us, some joining and enlarging and these lovely ones coming together for the purposes of this new moon day and the year of the dragon. And before we get any more deeply into all of that, we're going to practice setting our earth anchor, a practice that we can utilize anytime, maybe daily, but certainly as we go through this year, it's wonderful to have the skill to ground and center. Just a quiet moment here and invite you to simply go into your heart space. Let out a breath and begin to let your breath deepen and slow.
Be aware of being in your heart center. Letting that breath deepen and slow. Feel how you are in the center of your human self. And allow your attention because uh, what I'm reminding people of is that we are a bridge between earth and sky. Our kin, in that sense, are the trees, the standing ones. You might picture eventually as this practice becomes more available and uh, flexible and you are nimble with it, I definitely urge you to take this out to be with one of your tree friends who are themselves bridges between earth and sky. And for a moment, just picture one of your favorite trees. Feel how it is their branches and crown reach to the sky. The energy coming down through their leaves and branches as will be true in the green months, coming down through their trunk to their roots deep in the earth. They are bridges between earth and sky. You might find yourself now leaning up against one of your favorite tree friends. Or maybe you're still sitting in your chair, but certainly below your feet is Mother Earth. And you might just make that little more vibrant connection. We're going to make it uh, with the, uh, the practice that we'll now officially begin. We are going to go down to our roots. But for now, we're going to bring our attention up to the top of our head and above our head called the higher self. Think of it as a chakra point. And above that, there is a cosmic connection that our soul is connected with. We have a pulse of cosmic energy to which we are aligned. Invite that cosmic energy now to descend. It, it seeks you all of your days. And now we connect with it mindfully. We welcome this cosmic pulse to which we are aligned. The energy we invite down now with awareness and gratitude to our higher self. It's about a foot above your crown chakra. You can feel its gifts arriving at our higher self, this beautiful cosmic pulse that we connect heaven to earth. The light of this cosmic pulse comes now to our crown chakra. We give thanks for its gifts of marvel, magic, and mystery. We invite this cosmic pulse to descend, blessing now our third eye chakra, bringing us the gifts that are the light of clarity and the light of wisdom. We give thanks, I give thanks and celebrate that this is so. Welcome the cosmic pulse now to our throat chakra, we receive the light of truth and the light of compassion. For these gifts, we give thanks and celebrate that this is so. Welcome the cosmic light to our high heart. We receive radiant health and well being, a strengthening of our immune system, our aura, and our chakras. We give thanks and celebrate that this is so. The light descends to bless now our heart chakra. We are loved. We receive and welcome this love. We are loved. We embody this love. We are loved, we radiate this love, giving thanks and celebrating that this is so. The light descends to bless our solar plexus. We welcome the golden light of courage and the will 
to be all we came to be in this life and in this journey. We give thanks and celebrate that this is so. The light descends to bless now our sacral chakra. We celebrate, I celebrate that I am of divine feminine. I celebrate that I am of sacred masculine. I celebrate their dance of oneness, their dance of communion. Give thanks and celebrate that this is so. We welcome the cosmic light to our root chakra, receiving the light of abundance and the light of security and that of ancient wisdoms and knowings. Giving thanks and celebrating that this is so. The cosmic pulse descends to our earth star chakra, twinkling away beneath our feet, mindfully aware of it as much as we can through each and every step we take on our day's journey, on our life's path, celebrating this cosmic connection, this chakra connection, the light descending now to our deep rooted connection to Mother Earth. Feel that pulse descending to the earth point to which you are connected in crystalline marble magic and mystery. To further our connection to you, beautiful mother, we send now with gratitude the coil of our magnetic cord and the coil of our electric cord. We give thanks for you to receive them and hold us in gravitational embrace in our beautiful connection to you as children of your marvel, magic, and mystery. The light completed in its pulse through all of our energy systems and chakras to you. And we give thanks to be this bridge, earth to sky, heaven to earth. Let us bring that energy now back up to our heart chakra. Allow it to arise filled with the energies that were gifted to us. Feel how your heart is overflowing with magic, with energy, with gifts of love and light that we now allow to rise through our upper chakras to the crown chakra, to our higher self, to go out into and in bringing all of these beautiful gathered energies of our initial and individual self, love and light gathered to our bridge connection now to the net of love and light around the earth. Feel how it is we are connected one with another within this circle and within so many other groups meeting and just this goal of this time, sending love and light to the net of love and light growing each and every day around the earth. Let us now, before we return to working with the energies of this new moon, let us send love and light to those places around the earth that are most in need of our individual concern, compassion, and love. Let us be mindful and grateful of the increasing powers of love, of light, of hope, of healing coming to bear through practices such as this for our individual selves and for the larger good. Come back now in what has been a meditation time of sorts to be more aware once again of the present moment. Grateful for the opportunity to practice and share again this earth honoring and earth empowering, setting our earth anchor. If your eyes have been closed, you might allow them now to gently open once more. Gratitude again for all of you who have come to be a part of this most marvelous gathering. And apart from practicing setting our earth anchor, now we're on to the meat 
and greet, as I promised, with the dragons. When I was pulling together notes and things we might do as a group tonight, I, here and there, you might say, I found things I thought, maybe I'll share this about the year of the wood dragon. And actually, mindful of one thing before we do that, though, given that the recording of this is February the 9th, we're really on the literal um, uh, pivot point, leaving the year of the water rabbit and entering tomorrow on the 10th, the year of the wood dragon. Let us take a moment as a group and as individuals to thank the water rabbit for its time amongst us, for gifts delivered in whatever form they were, for lessons learned. Let us release all that is complete, that is no longer needed, and releasing that and those things now. Mindfully see yourself disentangling or disengaging from whatever it is has come to mind. With thanks for the lessons learned, and whatever gifts received of things no longer needed. And great gratitude for that which has brought us happiness, delight, joy through the year of the rabbit. And we give thanks for the energies and the gifts of this most marvelous being, the water rabbit. And we bid goodbye. So now we can turn ourselves to what I've been incredibly excited to do. Find, uh, honoring the dragons to which we are connected. In the newsletter that some of you would have read, I did say I would tell my dragon story. Uh, and so I'm going to give a brief little bit of a um, uh, explanation of what that is. And I've been a person who all her life has been gifted with some pretty wonderful experiences that have involved magic and marvel and uh, mystical encounters. I'm glad that I came into this life with the ability to um, have them come my way and my recognizing that they are visiting me. And I thought as we come up to this particular arrival of the year of the dragon, that the dragon story to which, again, uh, there, there's a, a quote that I use on my Facebook page, what it is that creates the magic for whatever it is when you have those experiences I believe it's this. Magical things happen because we exist as part of the great mystery. Those are the words of Grandmother Flora de Mayo, and I think she's one of the 13 grandmothers. So being a person who has had magical encounters, in 2017, I had one of the most amazing ones in Paris, which completely gobsmacked me because it was a dragon. Seven years on, 2024, and seven years represents a particular construct of like an arc of energy or a particular part of the chapters of one's life. So I'm very, very mindful that as we come to 2024, the dragon, I will tell you quickly how it is we encountered one another, what they're wanting me to do and be now. I'm in Paris with my family, we are barely over jet lag. It is the second, no, it is the first morning. We had drive, arrived the, on the plane the day before and we're about to have a week's adventure in Paris. We had uh, decided to be part of a walking tour in order to get familiarized with the main part. We were gonna end up, as we walked along these boulevards, we were going to wind up at Notre Dame. So picture, if you will, this incredibly, I mean, I am just pinching myself. I'm in Paris. It's a beautiful morning. We're 25 of us walking down the street, giddy with being in Paris, finding our, our bearings. Down ahead of us would be the Seine in Notre Dame. And along the way, this was pointed out, this was pointed out, this was pointed out. So we're walking along. Beautiful wide boulevard, many, 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 many statues, lots of incredible buildings, all of that. I'm kind of lingering at the back. I'm just looking around all of that. And I'm hearing what our guides are telling us, but I, I'm just letting my attention go really where it wanted to. As long as I kept them in sight, I knew I'd be okay. 
we're coming along to, as I say, many statues. And ahead of us, I see a statue of yet another military figure mounted on a horse with sword raised, if I remember right. Oddly, because this drew my attention, he, he, I guess it was a he, I didn't see too many military women with swords, so I think it was a he on a horse. It was mounted on a boulder, not a car geometrically like a plinth or whatever they would call that. It was this huge boulder. So that drew my attention and we came up closer to it. And my eyes, I couldn't get them off the boulder. And as we came closer and closer, so I'll say maybe, maybe another dozen yards, I looked again, blink my eyes because the boulder was a crouched dragon. In the boulder was a crouched dragon. And I really did kind of one of these because I wasn't sure I believed my eyes. And so I'm walking along, keeping track of my group and I'm looking and it is a dragon crouched down disguised as a boulder. I knew what I was seeing. I've seen other magical things. And so I come up and its eye opens or its eyes friendly fashion speaks to me as one can do in one's heart and heart mind. It says, with quite delight, you can see me. And I said, yes, I stopped because I'm right across from it. It's about five yards across the, the grassy, uh, like um, side of the, uh, it, the street wasn't right there. It was a little further. And I said, yes, I can. And I mean, I was completely enchanted, but I've been a part of enough other beautiful things. I just was in this. It was so exciting. I couldn't believe it. And the dragon says to me, not many people can see us, but you can. We are coming again to be with you. Again, the operative word again, we are coming back to help you because you need our help again. That message was so beautiful and powerful and lovely, but I had to take it literally a step further. I wanted to get as close as I could to this beautiful being disguised in the boulder. What a clever place for a dragon to hide. So I stepped over the little chain fence. There wasn't any reason I couldn't. I kept my eye on my group so I wouldn't get lost. They were going further along. I walked up to the boulder and it became more and more visible. It's beautiful, friendly eyes and as you would expect, kind of greenish, scaly kind of thing, muzzle, beautiful front, like a big, big dog. And I leaned over thinking it would be okay. And I placed my hand on it and I felt its warmth. It was mutual love, mutual delight. And I, and then I said, I have to go. <laughs> so I bid it goodbye and returned and was with the group. I didn't tell a soul about that for the longest time. I treasured the encounter. I treasured the message. And I I found more dragons waiting for me when I got home. So you and I are all here tonight. That is my dragon story. It, it, it isn't that I did not believe in dragons, but I never thought I'd meet one. And of course, I met one as the right time, the right time coming forward. All right, here we are. You're the wood dragon. They are returning to help us. I cannot tell you that strongly enough. And guess what? For those of you who wish to be engaged with one, this is the time of your meet and greet. Keep in mind that new moons are a seed setting time. I'm going to introduce you to a wonderful resource tonight, but know that the dragons, and they've got a whole year coming up to be in encountering with us and to work and connect with us. Last but not least, while I'm remembering to say so, you're hearing this described as the year of the wood dragon. I decided not to try to include the details of what that exactly meant, but do follow some, you know, Google or whatever, or a person on YouTube whose information you admire. I suggest for those of you who want to Glastonbury, Daisy Foss, a name some of you will know, posted a beautiful bit of information about the wood dragon and look up how it is because I'm telling you dragons are fiery creatures and it's a good thing this one is a wood dragon because it makes it all the more wonderful to work with. I'm also thinking about that earth anchoring aspect. Okay. While we're still with one another, I want to tell you about a resource that I found very kismet-like in the last month and a half. 
I'm going to do a little bit of reading from what I received from a lovely person whose name is Valerie Young. She lives in the UK. I'm not sure exactly where, but I'm so glad I bumped into her on Facebook. And what I found is she's an artist, a wise woman, an adventurer, a kindred spirit. Oh, yeah. And she fraternizes with dragons, has for many, many years of her life and has created from her encounters and her art the most gorgeous set of oracle cards called Dragon's Ho, Messages from the Dragons. And I sent her her cards. They're all of her artwork. She has a beautiful website, the information I'm going to put below. And it's absolutely 53 cards worth of dragons, each of which she has encountered and uh, received messages from. I have drawn a couple for tonight I would like to introduce to you. Now, for those of you who are hearing and watching this as recording, as I show you each card, I would recommend you pause and look at the card. This is the first one. These cards definitely asked me to share them with you tonight. And here is the first one. So what I'm going to suggest is you just maybe gaze with whatever amount of attention to the card and listen to its message. I am the celestial dragon. You can see my colors at the edge of your mind. You can hear my music at the limit of your hearing. You can feel my energy on the outer limits of your consciousness. But I am real and I am in your heart. I have come to guide you through these new energies that are coming in from the cosmos and emitting from Earth so that you can navigate the 3D and 5D realities. I am here to help you for the new I am here to help you in the new dimensions that you will discover. As you become lighter, you will become more aware of me, but I am always with you as I am now. The cosmic dragon wants to say hello to you. And there is its message. As you can see, I'm reading off. And Valerie, as she did this work, received these um, um, downloads of information. So I'm working with the cards today. And this one left out. It is, oh my gosh, I don't know which one gave me more goosebumps. Let's have you have a look. And here is this message. I am the cosmic serpent. Sorry for the shake. It's just the way my hands work. <laughs> I am the cosmic serpent, the primordial mother of all serpents and dragons. Within me, I carry cosmic eggs. These I lay on the sacred earth. Each egg is nurtured and incubated. It expands, grows, and fills with sparkling new energies that create a sacred temple of the template of the new earth. Invite me to birth one for you in your sacred space. I'm going to read that last part again. Invite me to birth one for you in your sacred space, the cosmic egg. It's a new moon, people. There's a seed of a dragon egg ready to be nurtured, to be offered to you. I thought I was through with the cards in terms of sharing them. And I drew a card that I felt would be personal to my own celebration and where I'm going to go next with my, uh, you know, again, we're at the beginning of the lunar cycles of the year and it's a powerful seed planting time. But this felt important finally to be read to you, this beautiful dragon. And so I'm going to share this as the last reading and messages from the dragons. Each one has its own identity. And this one is and says to you, I am the dragon of completion. As the circle turns, the cycle completes and a new spiral opens. Look ahead now 
to where you are going. The forward momentum in the movement propels you onward into looking outward once more. As the inner journey is embodied and all is gathered in, encompassed by you, hope is in the blue skies and the green earth within your roots, your wings, and the living waters. Your higher heart is pulsing to the rhythm of life itself. Let your body dance, your heart sing as you spiral with creation on this open outward bound journey towards the center that is home. The dragon of completion. I got goosebumped with all of these cards and they did it to me again as I sit here in front of all of you and this incredibly bountiful and beautiful land that I have come to inhabit on to my 11th year here, another cycle, end of a decade of 2023, the beginning of a new decade of my life here. It led me to a year ago, lover of the moon and um, my sacred name, which is always going to keep to your own knowing, is connected with the moon. And another year has come around, welcoming the year of the dragon. And once again, they asked that I share with as many people who wanted to come by what we do as a group and the Zoom opportunities that brought some of us together tonight. And those of you who have joined us in um, the opportunity you have to be with us. So what I will do at this point is remind you that it's a seed setting time for the cycle of the new moon that is in Aquarius through the full moon of which I'm not quite sure, but coming up in two weeks and then back to the new moon again, which will come in March with the arrival of Aries. That'll be an exciting time for some of us who are Aries, and I guess you might figure out at least one of us here is. So I want to thank everybody for coming along to be live with the Zoom, coming together further on with the recording. I hope it's brought you some fun, some meaning, uh, some mystery, magic, and marvel. The year ahead is certain to be full of wonderfulness and joyful times and mystery, but it's certain to be full of a lot of challenges. There's no way it won't be. Distress, uh, all, I mean, yeah, I could go on. I, I don't have to necessarily come up with all the adjectives for it, but it's going to be a trying time too. Groups such as the one we have here is a way of anchoring the uh, opportunities to know there's an earth anchor you can set each and every day if that uh, is a possibility for you but always the constancy too of this beautiful feminine force, Grandmother Moon, offering herself to us in her cycles, especially those of us, well, we're all with feminine energies. It doesn't matter the maleness of who is within these uh, viewings and groups of the moon information I bring forward in these, in these videos. We all have that. No, it's constant. Know it is everywhere available and know that it supports you in your journey. Thanking you once again for coming together in a group and doing this tonight. Uh, wishing you very, very well in your month to come. And I would ask for those of you who are seeing this as a video to help it go further in its reach, what we shared tonight. If you would kindly like it when you finish, consider sharing it, adding a comment because it's meant to go out beyond just those of us tonight. Um, so I thank you very much for taking time to do that and thanking you again for your uh, loveliness and being part of what we are doing one with another in this quite extraordinary moment and year to come. On route we go, last but not least, I would suggest you take some time to journal after you've gone uh, through the time together as we have had. Um, take good care. Much love from Light Spring Glen until we meet again.